Now let's uh, look at this uh, common types of probability distribution. Yesterday we have simply uh, looked at uh, if it is a continuous uh, distribution or a discrete distribution. Some of the properties uh, we simply said that uh, each individual probability should be uh, between 0 and 1. Sum of all probabilities should be equal to 1. But out of that, if there are some common scenarios see why do we typically uh, use these probability distributions one to model our business processes right how does uh, let's say i want to do some kind of a modeling for number of claims that can occur during a particular period during one year what is the chance of getting 20 claims what is the chance of getting 40 claims? I want to model something like that. Right? So, anything where I want to model something related to the discrete items. What are these discrete items? Countable kind of items. Number of claims. Number of successes. Right? Number of. Number of something. Whenever we are trying to model number of something, we are talking about discrete probability distribution. So, various kinds of models that are available for modeling number of something. And any kind of these models, for whatever we are going to discuss uh, now, there are three important things that we need to understand. One, in which context I can use this kind of a model. Right? For what business purpose I can use this kind of a model? How do I find out the probabilities using this model? And finally, I am also interested in uh, finding out what are the characteristics of this particular model. Characteristics are nothing but the mean the variance, something like that, right? For each of the model, how do I identify whether it is a, a form of uniform distribution or a binomial distribution or a Poisson distribution? What makes me identify that it is belonging to that category of distribution? Once I know that it is a particular type of distribution, how do I identify the probabilities of that particular uh, occurrence of number of occurrence of uh, one event or two events or whatever it is, number, number of something and what is the average of it, what is the variance and standard deviation, sorry, mean and variance, variance and the standard deviation associated with them, right. So, we will start off with uh, the uniform distribution, the first of them. Simple. See, formulas wise you need not memorize because most of these formulas are given in the tables. So, the intention of, uh, of this exercise should not be memorizing of the formulas but understand where I should use these kind of distribution, for what kind of a purpose I can use this distribution or from a business example which he has given, how can I convert it into this distribution, right? Those are some of the aspects that we need to understand. So, the first of those distributions is the uniform distribution where all the items have equal chance of occurring. All the outcomes which we are talking of, if they have equal chance of occurring, let's say for uh, throwing a dice, right? We can get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and all of them have an equal chance. It's a fair dice. If it is a biased dice where some edge is broken or something where there are some high chances of getting some number compared to the other number, then it does not follow a uniform distribution. But if it is a fair dice, or where people say equal chance for everyone, right? Whenever I say that there is an equal chance of occurring, 
I can simply take the probability of occurrence of each of them is nothing but 1 by 6. How did I get this 1 by 6? Because there are 6 possible outcomes here. There are 6 possible outcomes. So each, each outcome has a chance of 1 by 6. So whenever I create a distribution of this form, Whenever I see any example where the distribution is of this kind of a form, we categorize it as a uniform distribution. Now, in our uh, earlier chapter, what we have simply said is, this is a discrete distribution. We did not call it as uniform or whatever. We said this is a discrete distribution. So, for every distribution, what did we do in that, uh, in that chapter? We found out what is the mean of that. Mean, how do I find out the value into the corresponding probabilities and then add up and variance we have found out expected expectation of x squared minus expectation of x whole squared so for this i can find out the variance now what they say is if at all i know this distribution is following some kind of a pattern the mean and the variance probably you don't need to sit and calculate doing this entire exercise they are outrightly known. They are derived. What you are doing is the same. Let us say in this exercise, if I want the mean, 1 into 1 by 6, plus 2 into 1 by 6, plus 3 into 1 by 6, plus 4 into 1 by 6, plus 5 into 1 by 6, plus 6 into 1 by 6, which actually comes out to 21 by 6 or 3.5. What he says is, don't do that entire part. If you know that it is a uniform distribution, take the mean as n plus 1 by 2. Where n is your total number of variables. So, 6 variables are there. Right? 6 outcomes are there. So, you directly say that the mean is 3.5. You are not even calculating it. Well, if you calculate also, you will get the same thing. Right? The same way variance. Now, if I have to calculate the variance, I have to do expectation of, uh, the, the, the typical way is, variance is expectation of x squared minus expectation of x whole squared. This is the formula which we have uh, looked at earlier, right? Expectation of x we got as 3.5. So, expectation of x squared we will get by making, substituting x squared in form in place of x for the first row and then multiplying it with the corresponding probabilities. And after I do that, whatever I am getting is the variance. Now it says, if it follows a uniform distribution, you don't need to do that entire aspect. The variance is directly coming out as n squared minus 1 by 12. n is 6 here, 30, 36 minus 135 by 12 is the variance. If I know that the particular distribution is a uniform distribution, then I can very well say that the probability of occurrence of each of them is 1 by n. The mean of it is n plus 1 by 2 and the variance of it is n squared minus 1 by 12. Right? Of course, no point in memorizing, but uh, what? so you need to understand which scenario I have to use it. If all of them have equal chance of occurring, I can use this uniform distribution. Now, the next one is called as a Bernoulli distribution. See, in the uniform distribution, we talked about n number of outcomes. Right? And all of them have equal chance. Now, the Bernoulli distribution says, there are only two outcomes. Even if there are six, you create them as two. Success, failure. What you want, you call as success. Again, success is nothing, is not an English word called success. Here it is, what you want. What you want to observe is called as success. What you don't want is called as a failure. Let's say when I am throwing a dice. Right? When I am throwing a dice, if I want 6, so 6 is a success 
other than six is a failure, which means there are only two outcomes for me. Right? Of course, in, in isolation, we don't look at too much into the Bernoulli. The Bernoulli actually will be used to a large extent in many other distributions. In the binomial distribution, we'll use this mechanism called Bernoulli. In uh, geometric distribution, the next which we are going to discuss, there also we use this Bernoulli. So, Bernoulli is just a base for us to understand. We are not talking about outcomes here. We are trying to group the outcomes into only two outcomes called success and failure. Right? Only two. And uh, so, the probability of success is P. Then the probability of failure will be 1 by P. 1 minus P. Right? And so, the simple way, if you want the probability of success or a failure, you can simply take it as probability, let's say if I want, if I want probability of x equal to 1, which means it's a success. I want the probability of success, I can write it as p of p power 1 into 1 minus p to the power 0, which means the probability of success is P. And when I say probability of failure, x equal to 0, you put P power 0 into 1 minus P to the power 1, which is nothing but 1 minus P. So, simple way to understand Bernoulli, it is not a big thing to understand. All I need to find out is probability of success and probability of failure. Now, simple logic is, if at all, I, if I am throwing a dice and I am planning to observe a number greater than 4. Number greater than 4 is a success. So, 5 and 6 are becoming successes. 1, 2, 3, 4 are becoming failures. So, the probability of success, P, is four, 2 by 6, 5 and 6. So, 2 by 6 are 1 by 3 and 1 minus P is 2 by 3. So, just calculation up to this stage is the intention of Bernoulli. Now, these two values will go into my binomial distribution as some of my inputs in the next slide. Right? Now, the most important or, or one of the most important uh, distributions we need to be aware of is a binomial distribution. Few things. The same Bernoulli distribution, right, where there are only two outcomes, success and failure. Now, if that same experiment is repeated n number of times, let's say throwing a dice. When I am throwing a dice, there is some probability of success. Success is whatever we define. There is some probability of success. There is some probability of failure. Right? Whenever I throw a dice. Now, if that same dice is thrown some n times. Right? If that same act, uh, activity is performed n times. There may be some number of successes out of that. Let's say I have thrown the dice. 20 times, right? There may be at least 5 times I would have got a success. 15 times I would have failed. Success if I say getting a 6 on the dice. So, anything other than 6 is a failure. So, that's the first step. It should be a Bernoulli. What is the definition of a Bernoulli? There are only two outcomes in that. Success and a failure. So, here I am creating success means getting a, a 6 on a dice. Failure is not getting a 6, anything else. So, there it is a Bernoulli. I am repeating the experiment 20 times. I want to observe what is the chance of getting 5 successes. But here, two important points that we need to understand are, all the trials need to be independent. What do I say independent? The, the outcome of the first, does not influence the second. So, when I am throwing the dice second time, it is not influenced by the first one. Right? The result is not influenced by the first one. Then only it becomes, a, a, you will apply the binomial. 
two, it should be identical. Same experiment. The probability of success and failure should be the same. Right? When I throw a dice, any time I throw, getting a 6 is 1 by 6 only. So that is what we are calling as identical. These kind of uh, data, probably at slightly later point we will discuss in more detail, we call that as IID data. Called as independent and identically distributed data or distributions. Independent and identical distributions is nothing but the each activity, even if you are repeating the experiment n times, no experiment is, no, no, uh, no, no task is related to the previous task. The same activity you are repeating n times. The same throwing a dice you are doing it n times. But none of them are related. Right? No dependency. And two, the chance of success is same across. If that is the kind of scenario, I will call it under the binomial distribution. So, typically... The, the scenario where I can use this is, I have n experiments being performed. Out of that, if I want, what is the chance of getting x successes? What is the chance of getting x successes out of that? That is where we use the binomial distribution. So, typically, uh, the, the probability is written like this. This part is the Bernoulli part only, if you see p power x, 1 minus t, p, see out of n times the experiment is performed, I want x successes. So, the probability of success to the power of number of successes, probability of failure to the power of number of failures. So, out of n times, if I am doing it, if I am getting x successes, obviously I am getting n minus x failures. So, the formula for getting uh, x successes, the probability of getting x successes is nothing but ncx, which is a combination form. The probability of getting a success to the power of number of successes. Probability of getting a failure to the power of number of failures. This is the probability of getting x successes out of n trials being performed. You will write that as uh, the, the typical notation is binomial NP, which means the experiment is performed n times, right? And P is the probability of success. Experiment is performed n times, P being the probability of success, the distribution can be written simply as, so in that I will find out what is the chance of one success, what is the chance of two success, what is the chance of three successes and so on. And if at all I see the distribution is, follow, so probably it's like, uh, probably in the insurance world if I have to talk about, what is the probability, let's say I have uh, picked up 10 policies, right, at random. Right? And if I say the chance of one policy, there is a 10% chance, that, a simple example, there is a 10% chance that a claim will come on a policy. Right? Historically, I would have seen, I have issued 1000 policies last year, there were 100 claims. The practical application I am trying to bring out. There are 1000 policies that are issued last year and there were 100 claims that were made. Which means uh, the chance of claim present on one single policy is 10%. Right? Now, if I say, if I pick up any 10 policies at random, what is the chance that at least two of those policies will have claim? So, getting a claim, I will take it as a success. Probability of a claim or probability of success is getting a claim or having a claim, filing a claim. Probability of failure is not filing a claim. So, in that case, probability of success P may become 0 0.1, 10%, 1 minus P may become 90%. 
Now we are saying, okay, I am pulling out 10 policies in this month. Right, I am pulling out uh, 10 policies in this month. What is the chance of getting 2 claims out of these 10 policies? So I will write it as 10 C2, 0.1 to the power 2, 0.9 to the power 8. This is what is the chance of getting two claims in 10 policies which are being pulled out. Right? So, if, if this probability is high, they will take some appropriate action and things like that. Now, look at this. Uh, uh, so, look at this numerical. We will solve this. The same logic. What is the probability that at least four out of the six questions which have been answered are correct if the chance of answering a question correct is 80 percent so probability of answering correct if i take it as success it is 0.8 not answering correct i'll take it as a failure which is 0.2 correct now i am talking about six questions being answered i want at least four correct Right? Which means there could be 4 correct, 5 correct, 6 correct. At least 4. So, what is the probability of 4 correct? 6C4 into 0.8 to the power 4 into 0.2 to the power 2. This is 4 questions correct. 5 questions correct, 6 C 5, 0.8 to the power 5, 0.2 to the power 1. 6 questions correct, 6 C 6, 0.8 to the power 6, into 0.2 to the power 0, which is 1. Now you add up all these probabilities. That will be the probability that at least 4 of them will be correct. 4 or 5 or 6 will be correct. So, typically, uh, 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 again, 6 C4, 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. So, it actually uh, works out to 6 into 5 into 4 factorial divided by 4 factorial into 2 which actually comes out to 15. So, 15 into 0.8 to the power 4 into 0.2 squared plus 65 is 6 into 0.8 to the power 5 into 0.2 plus 66 is 1, 0.8 to the power 6. You can very well simplify this expression, which will give you what is the chance uh, that uh, at least four questions will be right. Right? So, this is how we simplify the binomial uh, distribution kind of question. So, for the, the, the principle of that is, I really need to see that there are n independent and identical trials, out of which I want to track x successes. I can easily find out what is the probability of success as well as probability of failure. So, out of n trials getting x successes, this is the probability. And couple of more things to be comfortable with. The mean in case of binomial distribution is NP. So, here also if you want, right. So, if what is the, what is the mean number of questions that would be correct. What would be the average number of questions that would be correct in this case? NP. N is 6. 8 is, uh, P is 0.8. So, around 4.8 questions will be correct. So, somewhere around 5 will definitely, on an average, 5 questions will be correct in this case. That is the mean. The variance is given as NP into 1 minus P, which is uh, 4.8 into 0.2. So, almost 0.96. So, that is the variance that is present in the data. Square root of variance is the standard deviation for it. 
So, this is what we do with a binomial distribution. Then the next thing is a geometric, which is also on the same lines as binomial in the sense n independent and identical trials itself. But here, we don't know the n. How many trials are being made, we don't know. Here the focus is, I, have, I am trying to model how many trials have to be performed before the first success. How many times I have to repeat the experiment? Right? How many times I have to repeat the experiment to get the first success? Like, if I say getting a 6 is a, getting a 6 on the roll of a dice is a success. Right? What is the chance that I will get 6 in 1 trial, 2 trials, 3 trials, right? How may, so, for each one I am trying to give a probability. What is the chance that I can achieve it in the first trial itself? I will get success in the first attempt itself. I will get success in the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, tenth. Let us say it is like this. Probably if I say passing a, a, a CT3 exam is let us say 30 percent, right. It is like uh, what is the number of attempts I have to make before I pass the exam? What is the number of attempts I have to make before I pass the exam? So, where I am looking at what is the chance I can pass it in the first attempt? What is the chance that I can pass it in the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, any number of attempts? So, number of trials to be performed before you get the first success. So, which means we are talking about a waiting time. Right? We are, so, this is a typically a one category of distributions called as the waiting time distribution. We will see a lot of uh, other distributions which will focus on the waiting time kind of an example. Right. So, what we are saying is, uh, if I am talking of my xth trial or nth trial is a success, then all n minus 1 trials should be failures. Right. So, there are n minus 1 or x minus 1 failures before the xth trial is a success. Now, you can write it in the Bernoulli form. Right. So, what we are saying probability of success, there is only one success, you are performing the experiment x times, there are only one success, which is so that we are writing it as probability of success into probability of failure to the power number of failures. I am having x minus 1 failures and one success. So, this is the probability of getting a success in the xth attempt. xth trial, the probability of getting a success. So, basically, probably we can take that same example. Let us say, if I am talking about the, uh, let's say the chance of success in a CT3 exam is 0.3, 30% chance of success. So, let's, uh, let's try to model it and see how it comes. Let's say the probability of success in a CT3 exam is 0.3. So, the probability of failure is 0.7. Now, what is the chance? that I will get, I will get a success in the first attempt itself, which means zero failures are there. Probability of success, probability of success to the power 1, right, which is as it is, into 1 minus probability of success, which is this, to the power, this minus, uh, 0, because 0 failures are there if I am clearing it in the first attempt itself. This minus 1. 
now you see so i can say that the chance of succeeding in the first attempt is 30% for this now if i look at it across if i look at it across then the chance of succeeding in the second attempt is 21% which means there is one failure and then a success so how did i get it one failure is p power 1 which is 0.3 power 1 into the failure 0.7 to the power 1 which is what is giving me 0.21 then we are talking about the third attempt is a success which means first two attempts are failures so 0.7 to the power 2 two failures are there and the third attempt is a success which is 0.3 so 0.7 into 0.7 into 0.3 will give me 0.147 so there is a 14.7 percent chance that i will become successful in the third attempt there is a 10.29 percentage chance that I will become successful in the fourth attempt. Right? Probably this is a kind of a distribution. Now if I try adding up all these, it will generally come out close to 1 itself. The sum of all the probabilities should become 1 because which means even there could be why only 9. Probably I may not uh, make any pass in the 15 attempts also. Right, so then, so the, the chance of passing in the 16th attempt is only 0.1 percent. Right, so this is the way the binomial, the, the, the geometric distribution is typically characterized. If I am talking about uh, uh, the x success, the first success is uh, coming in the nth attempt or x attempt, which means x minus 1 failures would definitely be there in that. So, the probability of uh, getting success in the x attempt is what uh, is being modeled through this typical formula. So, if you are talking about a question which talks about find the probability of getting the x success, right, uh, or the first success in the x attempt, we can model it as the geometric distribution itself, right. And again, the mean of the distribution is this much the variance is this much and because see this is a very important rule to use don't need you don't need to go with this remembering of this rule sometimes the question what he says is what is the chance of getting a success in the 10th attempt given that he was not successful in the first six attempts. Getting my question? What is the chance of getting a success in the tenth attempt given that he did not get success in the first six attempts? Always look at it very simple because these are independent and identical kind of stuff. It's as good as what is the chance of getting a success in the fourth attempt? So, six you forget about. The six dependency is not there at all. So, when he asks the question, this is the one confusing question which he generally asks. What is the chance that he gets success in the tenth attempt where you already know that uh, he is not successful even up to the sixth attempt? This information is of not much use for us. And simple way that we can model it is, what is the chance that he becomes a success in the fourth attempt? Because after six, there are only four more attempts that are required. Right? So, you find out as good as the formula, you apply it, finding out what is the chance of getting success in the fourth attempt itself. Right? This is one important rule we have to remember as far as the geometric distribution is concerned because they are independent and identically distributed kind of trials. And one more thing which uh, people typically uh, use to model 
used in, in see one example where we use geometric distribution is number of attempts to be made to get the first success slightly if i put it differently number of failures before the first success both of them are more or less related number of attempts to be made which is always one less than number of attempts to be made before the first success right if you try understand these two english terms number of attempts to be made to get the first success if i say 10 attempts to be made to get the first success then it is nothing but nine failures before the first success one lesser than that right so to find out any of these two requirements people will use the geometric distribution itself so if i want to find out uh, uh, x failures what is the chance of getting x failures before the first success probability of success probability of success probability of failure to the power of x failure right and the mean is one lesser than the mean of the earlier case in the earlier case the mean was 1 by p now because it is one lesser than that because number of failures will always be one less than number of attempts for the first success so in this case your mean will become 1 by p minus 1 which is nothing but 1 minus p by p whereas variance is still the same as 1 minus p by p square so all these formulas are there in your uh, actuarial tables but the only thing we have to remember is in what kind of question i need to use because he will never say this is following a negative by this is following a geometric distribution he'll not use those words he'll simply say these are uh, probably a uh, 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 n identical trials have been performed identical and independent trials are been performed right and the chance of success is something so what is the what is the probability that you will take uh, 10 attempts to get the first success so you have to assume that uh, you, you have to go with uh, the geometric distribution on your own and do the modeling and get your values right then the next category of distribution is nothing but an extension to the geometric or probably a generalized version of geometric generalized version of geometric which is called as a negative binomial why did i call it as generalized version the geometric what are we saying first success number of attempts to make to get the first success right or number of failures before the first success negative binomial says kth success not necessarily the first one right or number of attempts to make to get the fourth success or number of failures before the fourth success right both the things number of attempts to be made to get the kth success if it is first success then i can directly use geometric but if i am looking at kth success or number of failures before the kth success then i am resorting to negative binomial kind of a distribution which is a slightly generalized form of so in this case what should be the thing so in uh, in some x attempts let's say if x the x the uh, trial is my kth success right if my x the trial is my kth success then what should have been the scenario in x minus 1 trials i would definitely have k minus 1 successes only right see if my my 10th attempt let's say is my fourth successful attempt which means in nine attempts i would have become successful only three times in whatever order i am not bothered i want to see 
the tenth attempt is my fourth successful attempt. So the other way of putting it is the up to nine attempts, right? In the first nine attempts, he has been successful only three times. That should be the case. So that's where we are saying, what is the chance of being successful three times in the first nine attempts? So in x minus one attempts, being successful k minus one times is given by this. And probability of k, there are k successes, right? There are k successes because the fourth success is also there. Getting it? See, it's a simple binomial distribution itself. If I try to understand this, I want to find out what is the chance of getting my tenth attempt as the fourth success. So, simple thing I am saying is. What is the chance that I am successful three times in nine attempts? In the first nine attempts. So in the first x minus one attempts, what is the chance that I was successful k minus one times? So what is that chance? X. So I can use it as a binomial distribution. In x minus one attempts, I am successful k minus one times. So, using the binomial distribution formula, this is nothing but p power k minus one into one minus p to the power x minus one minus k minus one, which is x minus k. This is in x minus one attempts getting k minus one successes. Now, the kth one is a success. I mean, x, the next one is a success. So multiply it by p. So that's where this becomes here. In the power it becomes p power k. Because you are p power k minus 1, you are multiplying it by p. So it is becoming p power k, 1 minus p power x minus k. So that is where this formula is coming up. So getting x successes or x the attempt to be your kth success, you are using this kind of a formula. But look at it from a business standpoint. See, I want the 10th trial to be my 4th success. Right? I am not saying in 10 attempts getting 4 successes. That's, a, that's, a, not, that's not the one. I am saying my 10th trial should be my 4th success. Right? Which means uh, it's as good as saying there are 2 points in it. Up to 9 trials, 9 attempts, I would have successful 3 times. Right? Up, and the 10th is a success. That is only the thing which says, I cleared it in the 10th attempt. Right? Otherwise, if so if I just say, getting 4 successes in 10 attempts, then it could also include probably clearing it in the 4th attempt itself. All 4 successes in the first 4 itself. All these are possible. But if I want, no, the 4th the, the clearance happened only in the 10th attempt. Right? Like claims. The fourth claim has been made by the person in the tenth year. I don't want four claims in last ten years. That's a different uh, model for me. I am seeing what is the chance that he will take at least ten years or he will take ten years to make four claims. Probably the simple way of putting it. So, what is the chance that he will take 4 years or 10 years to make 4 claims? So, probably in 9 years, he should have made only 3 claims. And in the 10th year, one more claim. Making it that 4 claims are getting done, are getting completed only in the 10th year. Getting it? That's the reason first I, I looked one part of it which is only for 9 years. X minus 1, C, K minus 1 p power k minus 1, 
1 minus p power x minus k, x minus 1 minus k minus 1, which is x minus k. This is up to 9 trials. In the 10th trial, definitely it's a success. Which is what is the probability of success I am multiplying it with. So, overall it is becoming p power k. Getting it? Now, if you simplify it, okay, probability of getting a uh, the x -th trial, if you try it with x minus 1 trials, right, these two can be linked even through this formula without solving it. See, what is like, what is the chance that uh, he is getting successful in the 10th attempt and what is the chance that he is getting successful in the 9th attempt? If I want to, see, from the 9th attempt directly, I want to find out the what is the chance that he will be successful in the 10th attempt? I can use this recursive kind of a formula. Which is nothing but the probability that he will be successful in the 10th attempt is equal to 10 minus 1 which is 9 by 10 minus k which is 6. k is 4th attempt, 4th success. k is 4 into 1 minus p. 1 minus uh, p for me is uh, uh, whatever. The p is, let's say, if, uh, uh, if we are talking about uh, a p of 20% uh, or something, then 0.8 into p of x equal to 9. So, once I know the probability that he was successful in the ninth attempt, just by doing this additional multiplication of the probability on the ninth attempt, I can find the probability for the 10th attempt. Otherwise, simple thing is, use the formula every time. If you are not able to bring out this recursive relationship, no problem at all. You can very well substitute it uh, for x equal to 10, x equal to 9 separately into that formula, into your uh, main formula, x minus 1, c, k minus 1, and get the probability of each of the scenarios. So, the mean is, it's because this is a special case of, this is a generalized case of geometric, kth success. In geometric, we said mean is 1 by p. Here it is k by p. Because uh, uh, it's a generalized form, kth success. Geometric was first success. So, wherever uh, the, it's the, the mean and the variance are same as the geometric only, instead of 1, we are using k k into 1 minus p by p squared. In the geometric case, it was 1 into, it was, the variance was 1 minus p by p squared. Here it is, k into 1 minus p by p squared. So, you have to just uh, try to understand what, what, uh, well, should I use geometric or negative binomial? Both of, uh, actually, you can use negative binomial for everything. Geometric is only one special case of negative binomial where we are talking of first success. But this is a general one. For any success, for kth success, this uh, 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 negative binomial is typically used. Similarly, the same logic, k failures or x failures before the kth success. Just like the way we, there also we did, what is the chance of having x failures before the first success? Here also we are talking of x failures before the kth success. So, if I am talking about uh, the kth success and x failures, x failures, kth success. So, k minus 1 I would have already become successful. If we are talking of kth success to come up, for now, I would have already got k minus 1 successes and x failures. x failures are there, k minus 1 successes are there. So, till now, I would have made x plus k minus 1 attempts. I had x failures till now. k minus 1 successes are there because I want to find out now the kth success. So, I already have x failures over. k minus 1 successes are already there. So, I am trying to find out in this many attempts, x failures, the probability of 
probability of success k 1 minus probability of failures which is x i had x failures or here i have 1 k minus 1 successes right and now the current one should be a success so which becomes this will become p power k so i can even uh, try finding out these formulas are already there you need to understand the context did he give the question of finding out the number of trials for the kth success or number of failures before the kth success number of trials for the kth success is called as a type 1 negative binomial distribution in the formulas he gives it as a type 1 i mean because there are two different applications of negative binomial one is to model uh, the number of the, the number of trials for the kth success two is number of failures before the kth success so the number of failures before the kth success we take them as negative binomial type 2 number of trials for the first uh, for the kth success we are taking it as negative binomial type 1 kind of a distribution then there is another distribution called hypergeometric distribution right there are a couple of them more the, we are talking about a hypergeometric kind of a distribution it's more similar to binomial but there are some some important things here in binomial we talked about independent trials here we don't talk about independent trials here we talk about dependencies right probably it's like if you understand this question it becomes more simple for you see in an exam out of 60 questions the person has answered only 35 questions correctly now what the examiner is doing is he is not considering all the 60 questions for the grading purpose at random he is pulling out only 5 of them at random he is pulling only 5 of them out of that 60 and I want to find out what is the chance that he is getting all 5 correct what is the chance that he is getting 4 of them correct 3 of them correct 2 of them correct 1 of them correct none of them correct so there is a dependency here right we are not talking about uh, out of the 60 questions what is the chance of uh, uh, or, uh, or out of it's not the case like out of 5 questions attempted right if the question has been if the, if he has attempted 5 questions what is the chance that uh, he is uh, he is succeeding in 0 of them or 1 of them 2 of them then it becomes binomial but here my requirement is slightly above that binomial though the second part of the question is if i am taking 5 questions what is the chance that he is getting 0 of them correct or 1 of them correct or 2 of them correct. That part is a binomial distribution. But there is one more information on the top of that. That out of the 60 questions that are there, he got only 35 correct. Right? So there are two ways we can do it. One, we can use what is called as a binomial approximation mechanism. Because this is looking more like a binomial distribution people talk about using a binomial approximation method for that what people say here is you take the probability of success from the available information 35 by 60 that you take it as probability of success or for simplicity purpose let me make this as 36 36 questions are answered correctly. So, 36 by 60. So, probably people say you can take your probability of success directly from the original information that you have. The probability of failure is 0.4. Right? And from here, you can use your binomial distribution. Let's say 5 questions attempted. 0 correct. 0 successes right 
0 correct 0.6 power 0 into 0.4 to the power 5. How much is this I am getting? 5C0 is 1. 0.6 power 0 is 1. So all I need is 0.4 to the power 5. Equal to 0.4 to the power 5. So it is saying around 1.024% chance is there. That out of the 5 questions that are being picked, none of them is correct. Now, if I use it using the hypergeometric method, that is a binomial approximation method, where I made some kind of uh, uh, adjustment. Directly, I have looked at the probability of uh, success using the original information that is uh, available to us. Using the original information that is available to us, we have looked at the probability of success and used it into the binomial function. Because... The, the moves are not independent of each other. We will find the probabilities to be actu um, actually different. Because binomial distribution assumes that the trials are independent. Whereas, in this case what happens? Depending on the question that is being picked up, there is a dependency part there. So, if I have to do it using hypergeometric, what will I do? There are 60 questions. 36 are correct. So, the first question, I have to definitely pick it up as the wrong. The prob See, the first question, see, if all five should be wrong, the first question should be wrong. What is the chance of first question being wrong? 24 by 60. Out of the 60 questions, 24 are wrong. So, the probability that I am picking up a wrong question, the first question, whatever he has attempted is wrong is being picked, is 24 by 60. Second question, also should be wrong. Because I have picked up one question already, I cannot pick it again. So, there are only 59 questions now and 23 of them only are possible uh, to be picked. So, I will write it as 23 by 59, that is the second, second one. So, what is happening is, the probabilities of success and failures are actually changing here. That is the reason we cannot use binomial distribution. Now, what about the third? 22 by 58. The fourth is 21 by 57. And the fifth is 20 by 56. So, these are the probabilities that all the 5 questions are wrong. Now, what you can do is you multiply all of them. You multiply all of them. And this says this is 0 0.007. The actual probability is 0 0.007. Whereas, when you have used a binomial approximation of that, you have got it as 0 0.010. 1.02% you got here, there you got 0.77%. There will be a difference. So, you have to make sure whether the trials are actually independent or not. In that example, the trials are not independent. So, that is the reason I cannot use a binomial distribution. And in that case, I have to resort to the hypergeometric where the solution comes through this kind of a mechanism itself. And uh, the only thing in a in case of hypergeometric is the means will match with your binomial. The average value will definitely be a match. So, here if I am talking about uh, the mean of this in this example 5 because I am making 5 at 5 questions are being picked up at random. K is uh, the or in the original whatever are the successes out of the 6. So, there is a point. Uh, so, this is 3 which you will get it even when you are using the binomial approximation also, the average is 3. So, the average is same when you are using a binomial approximation method or the hypergeometric method. But the probabilities of each of them will be different because of the dependencies which you are typically trying to bring them up. So, this is one category of distribution we have to be comfortable with. 
and finally one more distribution that we need to be comfortable with uh, in uh, the discrete case is the poisson whenever the questions talk about the number of events occurring in a specific interval of time right number of claims within the next one year so the time period is mentioned during a particular period of time right so whenever we are talking about uh, modeling the number of events in a particular period of time we we start uh, thinking of using the poisson distribution that is one application the second application is the n is so in the binomial case let's say an experiment is performed 1000 times right not two times not 10 times not 20 times but very large number of times and the probability of success is very very small right probably uh, 0 0.001 if the probability of success is very very small then also i can use poisson which means poisson is nothing but an approximation of the binomial distribution the linkage between binomial and poisson is like this the number of trials should be very large and the probability of success should be very small such that when i multiply the probability number of trials into probability of success np which is nothing but the mean of the binomial distribution this should be more or less constant if np becomes more or less constant i can use it uh, as a poisson distribution so i will not consider n and p separately here i will take their multiplication which is constant and i will have only one parameter called lambda so using that if i can uh, very well model the probability of getting x successes using this kind of a formula lambda power x into e power minus lambda by x factorial if i take a numerical it becomes easier look at this one the num uh, probably look at the first one then we'll go to the second if the rate at which the goals are scored in a game of football is on an average three every match right so the the constant is three so the lambda is equal to three here three per match three per match what is the chance that more than five goals are scored in a match five means it could or probably will say that five goals are let's not use more than what is the chance that five goals are scored in a match so all i need is i need p of x equal to 5 more than means i need to find p of x equal to 6 x equal to 7 and all those things but at higher values it becomes almost minute the, the probabilities become much much lesser okay so p of x equal to 5 if i have to find out it is nothing but lambda power 5 lambda is 3 in our example 3 power 5 into e power minus 3 by 5 factorial how much is this working out to 3 power 5 into e power minus 3 divided by 5 factorial comes out to 0 0.10 so there is a 10 percent chance so probably you can model this is a very real world problem right if it typically there are three goals that are scored in any particular match on an average on an average we are seeing that around three goals are being scored right then what we are trying to say is what is the chance that five goals are scored because on an average it is three i want to find out what is the chance that not even a single goal is scored in a match what is the chance of scoring one goal in a match right so that i can model as a poisson distribution itself where the average is constant the probability of success is probably if i am looking at the number of minutes of the match 500 minutes 
or probably seconds, 5,000 seconds. Goal is nothing but it's a spontaneous thing. So probably in 3 seconds you had a success, which is nothing but 3 goals. So the probability of success is very, very less. Number of trials is very, very large. In those cases, I am taking the multiplication of that, treating it as a constant and using it uh, for my modeling purpose. The same thing, look at the next question. The number of home insurance claims a company receives in a month is taken as a Poisson distribution with a mean of 2. In a month, it is taken as 2. What is the probability that the company receives exactly 30 claims in a year? Either I can make it as 24 in a year or I can take it as 2.5 in a month. One of them I can translate it to. So, simple thing probably instead of doing big calculations, I will try to take the other way itself. 2.5 claims in a month. So, I will make it as probability of x equal to 2.5. Lambda power 2.5 e power minus lambda divided by 2.5 factorial. Whatever is the value that comes out, we can very well take that formula. Right? So, this is how we can use the Poisson distribution also as a part of our modeling. So, we are, we are typically uh, looking at uh, all number of only. If you look at the commonality in all these distributions, number of successes in n attempts, binomial. Number of attempts for the first success, geometric. Number of failures before the first success, another geometric. Number of attempts for the kth success, negative binomial. Number of uh, failures before the kth uh, success. Again, type 2 negative binomial. From a number of uh, successes, from a non-identical and independent distribution, hypergeometric. And number of uh, successes where n is very large or within a specific interval of time. Poison. So, typically at the end we are talking about modeling the number of something itself in various circumstances which are leading to various distributions for us. The same way, so all you have to do in this is uh, the formulas you don't need to mug up, but you need to understand the context in which all these things have to be used, right? Just, just by looking at the numerical question, you should be able to make out that I should use this kind of a distribution in this context and immediately you know the mean variance, you can visit the formulas, check out for the mean variance of each of them and you can try to find out uh, your calculation. So, this comfort you should definitely get if you have to attempt either the other subjects based on CD3 or even uh, the next chapters also. Right?